This week on Chicago Beer Pass, Nick and I are talking about Rock Bottom Chicago, a trip out to Two Brothers Roundhouse, and then we wrap up the show with a whole page of beer news. All those end of the year beer lists are coming out, so let's do it. Let's jump into this week's episode. Cause you know it's gonna court pop out. Boop, yeah, it flies like fucking like, ten feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. The legend, Mr. Pete Crowley. I, I, I love Pete Crowley, man. How's that, how's that beer? What you think it is? It'll, it'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick White. And we're back in the cold studio. Man, what happened? Winter's here. I'm so over this, this shit, is, man. This is disappointing. But we got some milk stouts to go to help warm us up. Coffee milk stouts. To help ease the situation. <laughs> uh, Jerome and the good folks at Bold Dog were kind enough to drop off this uh, coffee milk stout, man. Yeah, he said this was their second batch they can so all oh, right on that's very nice cheers to those guys uh we got a lactose and passion house coffee uh ethiopian blend um I, I don't think i've ever had passion house i know they're a local roaster mm-hmm. i've had them a couple times and they're yeah. pretty solid yeah what's the name of this beer man deviations deviation is this uh it's one of the dogs right yeah so i forget which one which dog this is i know this was the beer that they were talking about brewing gotcha. when they were on the episode which everyone should go back and listen to that one there wasn't like a lot of i think we talked about phobab a little bit but yeah. other than that it was all about bulldog and what they're doing for sure um so yeah you can pick these up in little tall boy cans four packs of around binnies places like that that have like a large selection because they're still doing the self-distribution thing so <laughs> If it's not at Benny's, it's not worth drinking. I love that tagline. That's my favorite local tagline. Oh, that's their tagline? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, that's awesome. Nice. Yeah. I got to go there this weekend, so I'm going to peruse and see what's new that I like miss out on going to Whole Foods because I'm like, that's usually where I'm at, Whole Foods or Trader Joe's or whatever. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm always digging Bulldog stuff. Nice to see what else they're doing and even better for them to drop it off here at the studio for us we need more of that <laughs> type of action from, from, beer drop-offs? from everyone yeah if anyone wants to drop us off beers <laughs> we will drink them yeah uh, that's a guarantee that these if are facts <laughs> facts only brad <laughs> if you give us beer we'll drink it <laughs> all right so last week we recorded on monday yes. and then i didn't even get the episode out till friday it i'm was like just, man I was, I was starting to hit brad up like man, brad is everything all right man it was a crazy we <laughs> We were a mess in that episode. Yeah. We were breaking lights, spilling beers, yeah. and then couldn't get it up in time. Just a busy week, so. That's in line with how the episode went. Though. Right, I know. <laughs> it was just a mess, oh. yeah. <laughs> so sorry if that was your first episode you heard of Chicago yeah. Beer Pass. They are uh, not all that, I guess, uh, ridiculous. I, I'd say most of the time our, our, our shit's semi kind of together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> most of the time. Uh, but because I think my week was so crazy, I didn't really make it to anything. Hit up rock bottom. Right on. That's not that interesting of a spot. Yeah, yeah. Downtown. Uh, yeah. Well, that's the, the only one down over yeah, around here. Yeah. Yeah, the Chicago location. Uh, yeah. They had a couple barrel aged beers on, but I was there for like a meetup, so I wasn't there to like yeah. drink barrel aged beers. And their brewer left recently. Oh, really? To join Michelle Foyke and her heiress project. The, the Goddess of Chaos, I think, is Eris Brewing's Insider House. Oh, okay. It's going to be a t- full-on tap room, too, over on Irving Park. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I didn't so know that. Wow. I wonder who's brewing over there now. Because they were starting to, I guess, step their lineup back up. Because back in the days with Pete Crowley, it was on point. Right. And then once Gordon Biersch kind of took them over, it all kind of just became fireman red and uh, this yeah. and that for just, a little bit it was almost like a step back in time to like early 90s beers yeah right? and so now they're finally like coming back and it seems like in the last year or so the beer selection at each location is a little better right on um, right on but that was my only like i guess brewery spot hit up um what about you you were posting a bunch of photos on the instagram yeah. so you were out and about on the ig man i got caught up in this um this weird like role where you just you go to a bunch of places you that were not on your radar at all okay so we just kept rolling you know we're like we're like let's do it man so my buddy um 
my buddy Josh, who writes for the Bourbon A, Bourbon A Kankakee yeah. Daily Journal down in a beautiful Kankakee, Illinois. Yeah, he was hanging out with you at Fobab, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was at Fobab. And he was up because he had to go, um, he's doing some kind of thing in the paper where, you know, he's giving away all this, like, these brewery gift packs, basically. Oh, cool. So he's going around to the breweries and, and grabbing stuff. Um, so he's like, do you want to roll? I'm like, yeah. So we go to, uh, we, we hit a sprint, man. It started off color. Then we ended up at a beer temple and half acre. Okay, nice. Yeah. Oh, and Green Lady. We finished at the Green Lady. Okay. Was that uh, the half acre one, like, on Lincoln or the Bowman? We went Bill? to Lincoln. You oh, know, okay. it was funny because we went to the Beer Temple just to do a round. It was going to be Beer Temple Metro. And then the Beer Temple guys are like, you know, I saw a bottle, the last bottle of Big Hugs, uh, bourbon barrel aged. So I'm like, let me get that. Yeah. Um, they had and, a bottle? They had a bottle of it in what? the shop. Yeah. I'm what like, day were you there? This was Monday... Two, no, Wednesday. It was Wednesday, Wednesday. Man, last I, Wednesday. I was there on Tuesday. I didn't see squat. Yeah, I was there last Wednesday. Damn. And um, they apparently they everyone loves the vanilla. They're like, dude, if you they got vanilla on at Lincoln, you got to go right now and get mm-hmm. it. So that's what we did. We drank, uh, you know, Beer Temple's the only place where you can get scratch on tap and Omni Polo. Yeah. So we got those two, and then we sprinted over to uh, burritos and vanilla hugs. Yeah, that vanilla hugs. It's legit. It's, it's tasting good. Even regular big hugs is tasting yeah. good. Yeah. Um, so, my so, uncle had some cans, and so okay. Open that up. Yeah. Um, you know, you forget how how cool of a, you know, because this wintertime hunt for these beers, you know, we talk about it for three, four weeks now. But, you know, here Big Hugs is, you know, running nine years strong now. Yeah. And what? it's a nice compliment to the other big beer hunting in, okay. in the winter. It gives us a really cool activity. I love I love that beer as the other big badass winter stop release. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And because it was, I think, bigger this year, some of those cans went out to distributors because my uncle had cans this time. Yeah. If you were at a place that had half-acre beer, there was a good chance you were seeing bottles and cans popping up so you didn't have to go to the, the brewery. Yeah, so I like that. I definitely dig the drinkability on barrel aged hugs. Okay. It was very nice. Both of them were very nice. Very nice. I was excited about those. Man. So, yeah. Um, oh, the coolest part of the night probably was hanging out at Off Color with uh, Jess. Straka, she's like, yeah. uh, I forget her role. I said some marketing in some capacity. But she used to work at uh, Revolution, uh, and she used to work at uh, Metro. At Metro. Mm-hmm. So she was saying how, you know, she got to see Metro and Off Color in their beginning stages, essentially. Right, yeah. Which is a kind of cool kind of cool angle, man. I was like, yeah, Brad was telling me that the, uh, you know, the Metro, the not the Metro Mouse, the Off Color Mouse has a name. And uh, the name is uh, Mischief. Mischief, okay. So apparently, remember the launch party at that... Uh, at that bar where Laffler's all on the on the table, like but it half naked. Okay. And you know, <laughs> yeah. The, it, that was the name of that two day party was mischief. So the mouse's name oh, is, is okay. mischief. Yeah. Um, it that wasn't was cool. Earl. It whatever. wasn't Earl or whoever we said. It was like <laughs> Kevin. We're like, his name better not be like something like that. <laughs> but yeah, man, because I, I like the um, I like the way that place is laid out, and I'm like, well, you know, did just did someone come in and consult with you guys? You know how Goose Island had yeah. all these restaurant real flippers come in and, and redesign. They're like, no, nah, man, we tapped our graphic designer, and you know, and just our in house crew, and that's how we for heard, the mouse trap for the mouse trap. Okay. Yeah. So I still got to make it over there. I haven't checked it out yet i drive by it all the time yeah it looks like there's people in there every time i drive by so yeah so and then we had no gnome on the show last week so i was like yeah we just had your beer on the show mm-hmm. so it was cool hanging out with her yeah um yeah and that was about it oh and i finished at the green lady for the first time in like five years according to uh Foursquare. oh okay yeah, yeah. So I, was like, I haven't Man. been there i haven't been there a long time either I gonna, yeah <laughs> we're feeling good after half acre we're like well, what do we do now chef you gotta keep going yeah. green lady we're about to pass the green lady let's just stop there <laughs> I think that's my favorite thing about continuing to check in on Foursquare. I usually try to make sure I do because when you go to those places like that, you're yeah. like, when was the last time I was here? Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I like that. Oh, we made a stop at Forbidden Root. Uh, they got something called the uh, Oatmeal Raisin uh, Brown Ale. It's called uh, Me Drink Cookie. Me Drink Cookie. Yeah. Drink cookie. Um, that sounds like something Cookie Monster would say, yeah. right? Like in, or, I still think uh, Sublimely Ginger is their best beer, though. Oh, and it's good. But you know, the Smooches Booches, their uh, New England IPA, their Haze, okay. was really nice. What if I had that one? Did was, you get the burger, though? I got the burger. Yeah. And, you know, people keep talking about this Owen and Engine burger. It came up during, because, you know, you go there on Monday, I think, you get the burger shot uh, beer for like 15 bucks. Okay. And it was good. And people at the table were like, yeah, that Owen and Engine <laughs> is where it's at. Yeah, so. Yeah, I don't know. that uh, The Forbidden Root one is good. They have like a good... 
the sauce, like the yeah. There's like the, the kind of like mayonnaise right. pickle kind of. It's like uh, it kind of reminds you of coleslaw a little bit. Yeah. There's uh, there's white cheddar. There's jardinier. Mm-hmm. It's a good burger. Yeah. So now I'm gonna like hit Kumas and hit Owen and Engine and see what's going on. Kumas is a different. Beast. Kumas is a fun beast. It's kind of like uh, I don't know. It's like the. It's like the Rainforest Cafe of burger places, right? <laughs> like you go there, you or the Tiki Bar. Like okay. you go there for like, I go there for the fish bowl. Like gotcha. I'm not, I'm not going out drinking and getting a fish bowl every time I go out. But if I'm at a Tiki place or if I'm at Kuma's, mm-hmm. give me the biggest burger you have with the craziest stuff on it. I miss the waffle fries at. Uh, oh yeah, at Kuma's. The waffle fry era at uh, Kuma's is is missed for sure. I just go salad, so I feel a little better about myself. This guy. <laughs> this guy and his fucking salad. Yeah, All right. So, so burgers. We're talking burgers. Yeah, and we're off. Beer, man. Oh, but I made it out to uh, Two Brothers, man. Oh, the Roundhouse. The Roundhouse. Okay. Yeah. You know, we're out in Aurora, bright and early Sunday. Um, oh, yeah. So apparently they're closing, they're closing the Warrenville facility, and they're going to double down in Aurora and do uh, the 25-acre campus out there. Okay, yeah. and they have the Naperville downtown with the craftsmen. The craftsmen. Apparently, yeah. they have five restaurants every day. Right. Yeah. So that sucks for Warrenville <laughs> location. <laughs> I mean, we hit them both because it was like they had a North Wind, a Cherry North Wind on, and the Roundhouse didn't get it. And they're like, the only place to get it is Warrenville. Okay. We got there. We missed it by like three days, though. They said okay. it was there Thursday night. It was gone by Friday morning. All at, all seven cases. Wow. Yeah. So because it's part of their 12 beers of Christmas over there. Hmm. Yeah, but I hadn't been to the Roundhouse in like years, so I didn't know that they were doing. They're roasting the coffee there, and then they got like this uh, little tin barrel system where they make one beer, pretty much like one beer a month. There, right. Basically. So where, if they're closing the Warrenville one, you said they're gonna build the, out at the Roundhouse. No, no. There's a uh, another facility in Aurora. Oh. Okay. Where they got 25 acres, and they're, they're just gonna do it all there. Oh. Okay. So they'll keep the Roundhouse, and this other 25 acre thing will be their two locations. It'll now. be the like the production. Probably you won't even be able to go there. It'll probably be strictly production. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. So. 25 acres. That's a lot. Dude, I didn't know they had a full line of uh, like spirits. You know that, that were. I thought you know it was. No, I didn't know that at all. I, th- I mean, I heard about that coming, but no, yeah. it's like up and running. Yeah. So, dude, this coffee liqueur that they got was pr- pretty was pretty legit. Yeah. Okay. I was like, um, yeah, and then there's a gingerbread liqueur. There's like uh, some vodkas, um, but I left with the coffee liqueur. Okay. Because we talk about like I got the bourbon cream. It's too milky in the coffee. Too yeah, milky. Yeah. Too milk. Okay. It's coffee liqueur. Co- yeah. Coffee and coffee. Yeah. Um, oh, and they had a, a really cool diversity of, of hops map in there that I really dug. I think I'm going to try to get a copy of. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, and were they rocking – is Bear Tree still around? Is that going? That's like their winter barley ra- wine. Um, it wasn't on the taps at the Roundhouse, and then I don't remember seeing it at the uh, production either. Mm, okay. I was trying to – Maybe it comes out after the new year, but I feel like it's a yearly release. But I maybe think you're right. maybe they stopped. Yeah. Yeah, fun stop. I got um that Wouch. As a sour ale from them, sour okay. ale with cherries. It's only out, just part only out as part of like the December thing. Nice. That was a fun stop. Man, yeah, I saw you post like I think four or five pictures on the Instagram. So yeah, I was like, dude, I should picture it up because I mean yeah. I'm in Aurora for the first time in like three <laughs> three years. <laughs> and yeah, we've been slacking our pictures. We haven't uh, been getting out as much, so we gotta keep that going. Yeah. Awesome, man. That is quite a ride. Anywhere else you end up at? No, I think that's it, man. Okay. Yeah. So you're in the city, in the burbs. Yeah, not too bad. We were all over the place, I feel like, this it was, week. It was a good week. Yeah. Uh, so then diving into this weekend, I know we've been talking about how the events are pretty slow yeah. during this time of the year. There's usually maybe like, there's usually beer releases or tappings for the winter offerings. But yeah, there's not too much on the calendar again. Yeah, it's true. It's pretty light out, man. Uh, we can start with Thursday this week, Thursday the 14th. Uh, the good folks at Corridor, they're doing another run of Squeeze It. Mm. Uh, Squeeze It is their uh, their haze and yeah. uh, tall boy cans. Delicious stuff, by the way. Right. Yeah, the, that's Thursday at noon. And then uh, I found two events on Saturday the 16th. One is down in Kankakee if you're, if you're feeling frisky and you just want to leave town. you know. Uh, I realized that Kankakee and uh, Aurora, both 50 miles, opposite directions. Both 50 miles from Logan Square. Okay. Yeah, hella, hella far. <laughs> but it makes for a good road trip, you know. 
Um, let's see. They're doing uh, down in Kankakee. They're doing uh, a barrel aged barley wine release called uh, Afterworld. Okay. And um, they're also having a chili cook off, and then they're gonna have a bunch of special guests, specifically like BCS stuff on tap for their barley wine okay. launch party. Oh, and uh, and they'll also have a variant of Dark Secret coming out. And that that's day. on Saturday. Yeah, that's on Saturday. I will be out. The 50 miles the other way towards Aurora. So, there you go. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Maybe I'll stop by Salmoth or uh, Two Fool Cider. Yeah, like Miskatonics out there. Right. Yeah. A lot of good stuff out there. I have to plan my plan my Saturday out a little better. <laughs> um, um, and then down um, in Tinley Park, uh, Hailstorm is releasing uh, their Vlad this weekend. They got two versions of Barrelay's Vlad, the Second Order of the Dragon. Okay. That's what they're calling it. That's a mouthful. Yeah, yeah, so Vlad was one of the beers they had at Fobab. Yeah, uh, um, Raspberry Vlad, I think, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. it was right next to Claire's. A uh, couple other ones, but that Vlad with cherries was great. It was fun. It, it was, was really fun. It was up there with Claire's. I agree. Um, the two variants on Saturday, uh, one's going to be coconut. The other one has maple and coffee. Okay. Yeah. Um, a crew called uh, Wood Paddle Pizza will be there with their food truck. Wood Paddle Pizza. That's on Saturday. Okay. Yeah, but okay. it's a short week, man. That's yeah. all I saw for events, man. Okay. Uh, so we're cruising through this. Uh, how, oh, about wow. some, how about some beer news? What have we got? Yeah, you got a, sure. you got a big page of beer news there. Yeah, a little bit, man, a little bit. Let's talk about um, let's talk about the Queen Bee, man. Let's talk about Beyonce, man. Uh-huh. So there's a crew in Brooklyn called Lineup. It's owned by two women, okay. and they made this tribute beer. Um, it was called Beer 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 Beyonce. Okay. Right. It was a pilsner, right? And um, That's yeah. Weird. I feel like it should at least be like. A black pill, <laughs> like so, right. So they like, made. Uh, it's just a pills, and they're like, "Hey, we love Beyonce. We want to do this tribute beer." I guess it's gonna be golden. Like she's all about she the gold. She does like that gold. Okay. She was in uh, Austin Powers. A uh, gold. Goldfinger. No, no gold, gold member. Gold. Or, okay. She was. Yeah, it was called Gold Member. Okay. Remember, it was like <laughs> Austin Powers. One of the movies was called Gold Member. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, but uh, she wasn't. Uh, she wasn't a fan of the beer, so uh, they sent a cease and desist like two weeks after they launched it. Did she not? Did she try the beer and was like, "No, you can't do this." I want to I know more about. Or this. did she just like, "I don't like this." Man, like you didn't ask me, kind of thing. That that's what it sounds like. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I I know that's something you have to be super careful of for any brewery out there. Like, yeah. even uh, what Five Rabbit here the the what the fuck you Trump one or wh- whatever it is. Yeah, in Spanish. Uh, Chinga. To pelo. Yeah. Fuck your hair. And there's been Taylor Swift beers and things like that. That can get you in trouble yeah. super fast. Like, there, if you're a brewery, just don't do that. Like, because it's very, like, they can shut it down and sue you and do whatever they want because, yeah, there's really no safeguard yeah. there. Um, it's just not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, sucks for them. Yeah. Oh, but if you live in that area, um, the beer that they made, you know, like all these pallets of these cans... Are still, still they're still available if you're yeah. if you're in if you're in Brooklyn. The good part for them is they win either way, right? The brewery right? does. It's the like, brewery does. Oh, you want to shut us down? Thanks. Now everyone talks about us. They had never heard of us beforehand. That is that is, like, that is true. That's kind of yeah. I guess the the bonus there. Like you kind yeah. of hope maybe it happens. And I think they might have <laughs> went into it thinking that. Yeah. Like we we win either way. Yeah. 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 Um, the aviary. The well, the list for the world's um, fifty best bars came out. Mm-hmm. And uh, the only entry from Chicago was the Aviary at number forty-one. Okay. Yeah, and we were talking about that on um, that launch party for uh, Mischief, the launch party at Black Rock Pub that yeah. debuted uh, Off Color maybe about five years ago now. Um, the Off Color cocktails that were being mixed in the back were made by the Aviary. Oh, okay. At that party, yeah. Aviary, super fun. Have you ever been? I haven't been yet. Uh, it's pricey. It's like West Loop, right? Yeah, it's yeah. right over there by the Publican and okay. all that stuff now. Um, probably less, a little less exciting to go now, but you need a reservation. You can show up, but you have to wait in line. But if you mm-hmm. have a reservation, you kind of get in. There is the office downstairs. It's, not, it's more of a beer bar. Mm-hmm. But they rare is fun. I feel like it's like a once every five year kind of thing. Gotcha. Like, unless you're like... A high-end cocktail person, but at the same time, when you're spending thirty dollars on a drink, it better be good. Yeah, <laughs> that's a stiff price point. Yeah. Um, the top five uh, bars on that list, all from either uh, New York or London. Oh, uh, okay. The whole top five. Oh, so. I didn't realize London was such a big, fancy cocktail place. Yeah, same here. Yeah, um, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of year-end list stuff coming out, so okay. we'll just we'll move right along. The uh, wine enthusiasts made it a point to let us know, hey, we did a top 25 
of 2017 beer list. Okay. I'm like, um, all right, whatever. That's cool. What's the list? You know? Yeah. Um, we'll go through the top three. Uh, number three is breweries. Uh, ter- is it Terroir? Is that how you say the brewery sour project? I think so. We'll go with Terroir. Uh, the brewery Terroir 2017 boysenberry. That okay. was uh, number three. Number two, Bourbon County Stout. Okay. Uh, the OG, the original. And number one was a Rodenbox limited edition beer this year. Okay. Yeah. Uh, haven't had. Didn't have that. Didn't have it. So. Okay. That's what uh, one enthusiast thinks. So we got to put together our list or something, right? Yeah, we need where are some of my favorite year, beers this year, man? Year end list. Uh, that Scotch, uh, that Scotch barrel aged uh, beer, uh, Fobab, not my favorite. Not your favorite. Okay. I can, I'm, I'm quicker to name the, my beers I didn't like. Didn't than like. I, so maybe we go to the bottom, <laughs> like our worst beers of 20s. I had a beer from somebody at Fobab, and it was like a, I don't know, like a anything bagel something or other. Oh, everything bagel. And I was like, what the fuck? Okay. What the actual fuck? All right. Maybe yeah. uh yeah, maybe uh this coming episode next week or something like that we'll talk about figure out a list or something. Yeah, right on. Um let's talk about the uh West Burbs. A lot of West Burbs news this week, okay. man. Um so there's a uh two beer collabs coming from uh Miskatonic and Salamoth, right? And there's a collaboration with the Nap- Naperville Park District. So recently, they had to cut down this uh, tree called Hobson Oak. It's a 250-year-old oak tree. Whoa. Right? And apparently, like, it sat really close to a bike path. And, you know, the base the, the, root, the base was bad, and then the tree was leaning into the path kind of thing. Okay. So, like, we got to get rid of this tree. Um, but they don't want the tree to die, so uh, they're setting up this, uh, this charity where they're turning the tree into things that you can sell and donate back to the park district. Uh, okay. You know, so like tables, coasters, bowls, things like that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so the beer guys are getting involved, and they're making two collaboration beers uh, that are oak-infused with oak from Hobson's Oak. Whoa. Yeah, and all the proceeds will benefit the park district. That's a pretty cool story. That's actually. awesome. Yeah, that's a yeah. great project. Um, when's that beer supposed to come out? Um, didn't really have a timetable. They just kind of announced, like, hey, this is what we're doing, doing. and, okay. and they're going to be, our tribute's going to be these two oak-infused beers. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So... Uh, that's cool. Uh, Thrill list. Uh, they did a uh, all fifty states ranked by their beer. Okay. List. That is, that's not a bad concept either. Um, let's see. Uh, we'll keep it local. So uh, at number eighteen was Indiana. Uh, number ten was Wisconsin. Number seven, Illinois. Yeah. Brad. Suck it, other <laughs> Midwest states. <laughs> Suck it, <in> Iowa. <laughs> yeah. Number that's, seven. That's, that's pretty impressive. That's you know? pretty good for beer. Um, what were do you have the other? Oh uh, yeah, it? the top four. Um, no surprise here really. Uh, number four, Michigan. Number three, California. Two, Colorado. Number one, Oregon. I gotta say, we beat Michigan easy. Nowadays, I'd prefer Chicago beer over Michigan beer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had a K- 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 Kentucky breakfast out, not the CBS that came out. Okay. But KBS. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Weak sauce. Right. Founders and Bells and Jolly Pumpkin. They do make great beer. I think we're just doing better beer here. I agree. Um, I'm so, more a fan of um, even shorts. They're okay, but uh, shorts is gimmicky. Yeah, yeah. No, nobody's. Who's bringing the pain in Michigan these days? Um, you know? There, there are some new ones popping up, but that's tough. We've talked about this before. We don't drink non-Chicago beer. We're at that point. I mean, yeah. and kudos to them because I think they were at a place. You know, with the Oregon's and the Wisconsin's and the Michigan's, they were at a place where they were doing that long before us, making right, good yeah. beer, and they probably just excluded most people. Yeah. You know, because they had an abundance of their own stuff to drink, and we're well, yeah, we're coming into our own. We're at that point now too. Mm-hmm. So, but I guess maybe as a whole state, Illinois falls short. But if it was just Chicago versus Michigan, we yeah. got that. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. We as a city can take down the whole state. <laughs> I can uh, dig it, man. Um, let's see. Uh, the Open Bottle. They have a collab with uh, Hailstorm. It's called the uh, Santa's Cookies and Milk. A um, uh, dollar from each bottle goes to the Tinley Wish Organization. Okay. Yeah, so this is like their the latest in their collab series with Hailstorm. They're like besties, man. They did one of these over the summer called Boeing. It was like a Hayes collaboration. Um, the good folks at Pipeworks are self-distributing to the Milwaukee area now. You can do that? I guess so, <laughs> They're like, fuck, we're not waiting on anybody. They're basically like, they are the anti-establishment <laughs> brewery. Like, we're just going to do this. And what are like, you guys going to do? <laughs> Everyone wants our beer. Man, because, you know, you could get Pie Works beer in, like, Colorado and in New York. 
Yeah. They are slinging suds, man. Yeah. It's cool to see because, yeah, to your point, they are, they still, they still have to sign with a distributor. They're just rolling. Yeah. <laughs> what is, like, you had to have reached that barrel limit, Yeah, I right? imagine the Wisconsin thing is for sure self-distro, but these other out-of-state, like, they haven't, they don't have a distributor for Illinois, their home state. Yeah. But they, I mean, but the, when they sell it out-of-state, they're using, obviously, a distributor. Yeah, they but, have to. Yeah. Right? Or I would think they would need to. Yeah, you're not going to, there's like the eight-man crew. Nobody's driving to fucking yeah, Texas. Yeah, unless they're <laughs> like, whatever. yeah, you know, go to Colorado, drop off our beer, load up with weed, come back. <laughs> we'll see you in five days. <laughs> we'll give you five. That no more. Uh, uh Spiteful Brewing, mm -hmm. um, after five years and 107 different beers, is finally opening their tap room on Saturday at 11 a.m. Oh, okay. You you set that up as like a, a bad thing. You were like, <laughs> finally shutting their doors. <laughs> like, it didn't, I was like, I missed this. What? I need to work on my inflections, man, on my tone. This is good feedback. I like it. I like, oh, man, that... <laughs> hit hard. But that's cool for them, man, because, you know, they're, like, literally next door to the brand-new Half Acre up in Belmont. Yeah. So that's a nice little destination. Um, Empirical's up that way. Hopley's not far from there. Yeah. That's a good That's a good route now. That's awesome. Um, Maplewood is open now. Oh, the Maple um, Room? Yeah, the Maple Room. So what is it? <laughs> that's not what it's called. <laughs> Do <Did> we... <laughs> That's what we christened it, right? That's what I wanted to be called. It should be called the Maple Room. <laughs> it's, I think it's called the Maple Maplewood Brewery Lounge. Okay. Because they're a distillery, too. Maple Room is so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The, they're open. I believe they're open in Logan, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm going to have to check that out. I like the, there's the photos from the early, like, soft open or wherever they have. Yeah. looked great. So i have to check that out. Yeah. Right on. Um, and finally in news, uh, Columbus Tap is running a promotion all month uh, where they're calling it their Beer Vent Calendar. Okay. So I don't really understand that name, but basically it's a daily beer passport. So you go to Instagram, you see what beers qualify to be consumed on this passport. And um, the, the grand prize, if you consume 24 of their beers by January 5th, the grand prize is a uh, three-night stay with brunch at Hotel Del Coronado in San Diego. Okay. Uh, so this is similar to, uh, what, Beer Bistro's 12 Beers of Christmas. Oh, yeah, or, right. And so they do, like, stouts where it might be 25. I don't know. It's 12 or 25. And then you get, like, the uh, T-shirt or something. Yeah. yeah. So they're kind of – they're upping it. Yeah, there's two other gifts that you get, you know, if you don't reach 24. Mm. You know, there's it's an incremental. Yeah. But, but they're doing it a little different where you need to, like, check every day and go where Beer and, Bistro – you could uh, belly up and do it all. It's like a night. static list of these beers, right? Yeah. yeah, and theirs is a little is a spin on that. So, yeah, that's a cool idea. Yeah, I've so. never, I've never tried to do beer bistros, like Christmas beer thing. No, I'm never really over that way. Yeah, yeah. I I've mean, I've gone during the time, but I did like two of them. So, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like Dragon's Milk, Bourbon County Stout, um, what? Darth Star, like all those, like big, like you can't drink 25, 12% beers or 12, 12% beers. Yeah. Mm. So that does it for all the news then? That's it for news, man. Take that for data. All right. So we're going to come up with our own list if it's the best or the worst. Yeah. We'll, uh, we we'll report back. Yeah. yeah. I talked about uh, having some CBS on this week, but they couldn't do it. So hopefully we have them next week. Okay hear about the cbs release because they went up there and we'll have them on we'll cool. have some uh have some friends on joining us in the studio maybe we'll get their worst or best beers of 2017 guests are always fun man yeah i dig it mm -hmm. and when they bring beer i mean they better bring beer <laughs> <laughs> or it'll be like in the beginning well we were gonna have so and so on but yeah they didn't bring any beer they didn't have any beer so we kicked them out <laughs> all right well we're gonna keep drinking some bulldog beer here but, Nick, where can people find you, get in touch when we're not recording here? Right on, man. I'm on Twitter, at Nicosio. And I'm on Twitter, at BRAD. Chicago Beer Pass is on Twitter, at Chicago Beer Pass. Website, chicagobeerpass.com. All the episodes get posted there. Links to iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube. And, yeah, we'll be back uh, next week and counting down the days till Christmas. Cheers. Yeah.